Uh, you can see the slides, right? My screen. So today, uh, I'm not going to show you a demo with React Native because it's similar with React and we have seen a lot of uh, demos with React. So it's going to be a repetitive, but I will. Develop your mobile app for this week for those of you who are using your native to build the mobile app. So let's just uh, go through that. Uh, just a, a little introduction on React Native. It is an open source framework that allows you to build mobile applications using JavaScript in the React library. It was created by Facebook. Uh, it provides a way to develop mobile apps for iOS and Android platforms using a single database. Using a single database, React Native has been successfully adapted by hundreds of business worldwide, worldwide, including Uber, Microsoft, and Facebook, and it uh, is used across a whole range of industries. So it is a pretty uh, popular framework to build mobile apps across the world. Uh, key features I want to mention that React Native can give you as a service or its advantage would be the first one is cross-platform development which means you can write your code only once but you can deploy it both for the ios compatibility and android platforms compatible in one code you don't have to write two different course for the two different platforms that are commonly used in mobile application and you know, in mobile devices so there's a very resourceful in this area uh, the other would be component-based architecture, like React, the normal framework language, my framework, React Native also component-based, which means you uh, can build your React components using JavaScript and components of them to create complex user interfaces, like exactly with how we would do in React framework. Uh, the other point would be hot reloading, which means allows you to see the changes made to the code immediately reflected to the running app. So when you run a React Native app, it is con you will connect it with your mobile uh, device, either by Android Studio Simulate emulator or even with your actual mobile device. So when you do that, every time you make a change on your React app, you automatically the change on your device or emulator. So it has a very hard reloading. reloading. Uh, the other point would be access to native APIs. This is uh, one point I want to mention that can be useful for you. Uh, React Native has this uh, native APIs inside of it, which allows you to interact with your device and get information from your device. That is, you can access features like the camera information of your device. You can find the information of GPS, uh, contacts, more, everything that you in the device that you can be access them uh, using JavaScript. So uh, check this out. We we'll have this native APIs in the documentation. It can give you a guide to fetch data from the device that you can use it for any advantage. Uh, the last thing, like any other framework out there, it has a large community and ecosystem where you can connect with different developers, also library tools. So it's very rich, like React also very rich in this in this area. It has a lot of libraries you can use for, for your advantage. So uh, React Native is similar to that particular resource. Okay, the other uh, point would be that make React Native slightly different from the normal React framework will be these components. Uh, you use these components to build your, your user interface. Their name is pretty descriptive. So image, which means it's an image tag to which where you use it to upload or uh, to display an image. Uh, it's just a normal, uh, these are just component tags that you use to create a user interface in UI. This is, these are not that much included on the normal React framework, but uh, these are the tags and there are others also that you use to build your interfaces uh, in any form, any structure you want. So to read upon uh, this, Frame uh, components 
uh, in detail and to find out uh, to also fetch other different components. I have put these two references where it gives you different component React Native apps that you can use it to build your React, React Native. So please check that if you decide to use React Native. As for deploying your React Native after you finished your code everything, um, I have for these two videos I will show you how to deploy it uh, on the internet and this is the documentation of deployment. Also please make sure to check that. On the deploy. Uh, and the other points I want to mention uh, for environment setup, they have it's uh, just a command that you can run, like uh, you did on the active framework. So uh, you can follow this setup to install it in your system. Uh, the other uh, reference I want to mention is this uh, this particular video, which can uh, let you create an emulator on your system. I mean, you can install Android uh, Android Studio to just find this emulator on your uh, screen and just test your application. Uh, but Android Studio just need a lot of processing uh, from your CPU. So if you have that kind of laptop, it's okay. You can use Android Studio. You can install Android Studio and use that, their emulator. But other than that, you can use your mobile, your personal device as an emulator. And to do that, you will have to install this scripty script package. Uh, this is for the Windows, but I also put a reference for Linux also. So it will connect your device with your laptop and it will give a mirror image of your device on your laptop to just check, to test your React Native application through Expo or React, React CLI on your device. It just for the presentation also you're gonna make on Monday. It might be helpful if you haven't got on the stage to deploy it on Google or Play Store. So uh, these are just references I have put. The other would be, uh, it, this question has been asked yesterday for Nati also, uh, how you can connect to MetaMask wallet uh, using uh, the React Native app. So this search wave, they have this, framework name survey, which gives you a framework to, to install React uh, for web app and React Native for mobile app. They have this framework to uh, install their framework and through their framework, you, like White, using White, you have installed React. If you remember, I've showed you using White like that. Uh, third wave is built for web three applications and they have the resource or they have the mechanism for you to install React for web app using their platform. And also they have an option to deploy, to install a React Native application on your device using their framework. And their default React Native uh, installation has a connection to MetaMask on your mobile app. So uh, I would recommend you to check that. Uh, by default, it will contain uh, a connection with MetaMask wallet on, on your mobile device. Uh, you have to have a MetaMask uh, application installed on your device first from Play Store. You um, go to Play Store and you find the MetaMask application, install it. And after installing the React Native through this framework, when you click on it with MetaMask, it will automatically fetch the uh, MetaMask uh, application that is found on your, uh, sorry, on your device. So uh, how you can use their framework to use it for their web app or mobile app, there also a video on that. So here is the last video to show you how you can install the React Native. And then if you decide also to use it for the web app, uh, it, it has an installation with an example smart web app integration. So I think this video can be helpful for you guys. So please check that out. Uh, there's just their framework is really great. It gives you also like a dashboard to test your smart contract before integrating it. So uh, just try to uh, check there. They have a lot of videos also on third wave, how you can do web dub and stuff like that. So check that on, on, the, on YouTube. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can read them. Uh, I think that, uh, how this is helpful. It's just a short tutorial. Uh, 
Um, any questions regarding what I just said, or is that clear? Could you just give me some kind of indication? Is that still clear or? I think it's clear, it's not that complex. Uh, Abraham, you can go ahead. So I just have a uh, quick question. So what are the features that we're we supposed to include in our applications for our uh, uh, project? I mean, in general or for the mobile app only? For the mobile app, the, the user experience, how it's going to be? Uh, well, I guess the driver, you can include a status check for their money, uh, their refund, how much money they, uh, the driver have on the system. Maybe you can include that. You, you should, if you decide to send the GPS data to the smart contract by letting the driver click a button, I mean, that is the easiest way. But the hardest, I think, yeah, we, yeah, the one also told you to just have a scheduling interval, right, to send the information. But if you decide to make sure to do the, the driver to click a button to send its location when it's arrived on that particular area, I guess you will have a better future for the drivers to click and uh, get transaction to the smartphone to send their information. Uh, what is this here? Um, I guess there isn't much. I mean, you can. Um, maybe registration or logging in features. I guess these are the main things from the driver. So you can include based on this one. Um, yeah, I think he left. Uh, any other question? Is that about the React Native also? If you have any other questions, uh, you will come to ask. Okay, so if you have any no more question, I guess uh, the we can end the tutorial. I have shared the this slide on the drive drive. So make sure to check that for some of the differences I put. Okay, great. Thank you for being here. We can end the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on the Slack.